Today's calisthenics workout is a bit of a crazy one. We're gonna go from a balance movement to a handstand push-up movement, to a press handstand movement, to a rings progression. We're gonna work all the way through down to a one-arm handstand, to a freestanding handstand push-up, a pike press handstand, and a muscle-up forward roll. I'm gonna start with easier progressions as a superset, and then I'm just gonna gradually make them harder and harder until we hit the main event. You can either use it as a follow along and just join in with me, or you can just use it as a tutorial if you're working towards any of these skills. Okay, first one's gonna be the crow, to the pike push up, to the wall lean, to the top support. So for the crow, nice and simple arm balance, elbows in towards the knees, hands on the floor, some external rotation, bring the head and shoulders down as the hips come up. You can either lift the feet fully up like that, or you can have toe assist if you need to. Once we're there, we can play around a little bit to get nice and comfortable and just hold here for time. Now this is something you should comfortably be able to hold a conversation in and hang here for 20, 30 seconds with no problem. So the pipe push up, we need to turn the hat around. We need to go into a down dog position. If you're not so flexible, you can bend the knees slightly. I'm gonna come forwards, create a triangle between the head and the hands as I come down. Elbows into the side, touch the head to the floor, back to the start position. Again, if you want a handstand push up, we need to work this up so we can do this comfortably for repetitions. Now for the wall leans, we're learning to take the shoulders forwards to create a foundation or a counterbalance to the legs coming down the opposite direction for that press handstand. So I've externally rotated the hands, I'm pushing up to a strong position, I'm gonna take my shoulders and my back to the wall at the same time till I make a strong connection and then I push back off to that starting position, opening the shoulders up all the way. Again, I should be able to do this comfortably for repetitions if I wanna to work towards that press handstand. Then into top support on the rings. So bringing the arms into the side, shoulders back and down, chest open. This should be a comfortable position to hold. So as you can see, it's the top of the dip and really should be a rest position. Next superset, kick up to the wall, feet raised, pike push up, back to wall straddle handstand and bottom of the dip hold. So for the kick up, we want hands on the floor, shoulders on top of the hands, strong base. Look at a focal point between the fingers. Do not move that focal point, kick, to the wall, come back down again. If that's easy, both feet up, touch, hold, push away. We wanna be able to do that for repetitions and consistency. Touching the wall very, very lightly. Ideally, you're gonna to be touching the wall with both feet at the same time. If that is too hard, stick with the one, two, but try and maintain that shoulder position, that focal position, and that good push. We don't wanna be collapsing at all here. For that pike push up, now we've got the feet raised, external rotation of the hands, take the shoulders forward to create that triangle, the same elbows in, push all the way back to that start position, open shoulders. Again, this is the same as the pike push up before, but we're just gonna be putting more weight into the hands and shoulders because the feet are raised up. For the press handstand, we're gonna do that wall lean position, so be able to go into that, but now we're gonna add in an opening of the legs towards straddle. Now, butt is touching the wall, but my head and my shoulders are off the wall. So we can go back to that start position, rep this, wall lean, plus open into this position. So butt touching, feet off the wall. Strong position with the shoulders. Then still above the rings, but we're gonna go into the bottom of the dip. So my arms are into my sides, and then I'm leaning forward slightly. Next superset, overbalance pulling, feet and hand raised, pike push up, floor press, and a dip. So same kick up as before, hands on the floor, shoulders on top of the hands, push as hard as you can into the floor, looking down to the floor, keep that focal point the same, kick to the wall, squeeze the legs together, reach up, push through the fingers, and as you're reaching up, you should float off the wall, relax the fingers, go back, learn to come on and off for repetitions. Now for the handstand push up, we're raising the feet up and the hands up, so we're gonna to start to work towards a deficit. So the shoulders now are gonna go below the hands as we create that triangle, arms into the side. So now I'm in that shoulder stand position. From here, I'm gonna push up and back to that start position. Exactly the same as before. We wanna build repetitions here. Now for the press handstand, we're going onto the floor. I'm gonna place my hands on the wall, so I'm mimicking the line of the handstand. Then I'm gonna pass through my straddle, bring my toes up towards my hands, kiss the wall, and come back down again. With this one, we wanna try and keep the feet as close to the floor as possible, keep the hip as close to the floor as possible. So squishing the position. You can do this in straddle, you can do it in tuck, and you can do it in pike. But same things apply, kiss the wall, hips as close to the floor as possible. Now visiting those two positions, so we've got that top position, we have that bottom position, back to the top position. There we have that ring dip, trying to keep the arms into the side, nice and tall at the top, nice and deep at the bottom. 
Next super set, underbalance pulling, chest to wall eccentric handstand push up, a wall eccentric press, and a false grip row. As you know, I really like underbalance handstand control, and this one's the number one for learning it. So from a chest to wall position, nice and tall, I'm gonna take the shoulders forward, so my toes are gonna slide down to the point where my toes start to float. When I get to that point, I'm gonna push up to my handstand, use the fingers to go back to the wall again. Again, this one's gonna take a while to get, so start with repetitions, have someone spot you, and then over time, you're gonna have more and more control. Sticking with that chest to wall for the handstand push up, so back into that position, external rotation. Quite a bit of space now we need. So I'm gonna slowly take the shoulders forwards and down at the same time. Our arms are coming into the side, try and keep one segment between the shoulders and the toes till your head kisses the floor, hold, step out the side, come back down, repeat. Then for the press handstand, we're putting those wall drills together. So I'm gonna be in that tall position, shoulders back to the wall, legs into straddle, but now I'm staying against the wall. And then I'm gonna peel as slow as possible off the wall. So low back, mid back, upper back, bring the legs together, kiss the floor, hold, come back out. You might need to play with your distance away from the wall. And obviously there, there's a flexibility demand as well. Then into the false grip rows. So making sure you have a strong false grip. You wanna be uh, touching the ring where it folds there. You might need a little bit of chalk or something in that position. So your ring or your hand is on top of the ring when you're below the ring. So practicing that, your fists are against your chest. You can have bent knees in this position or just change the length of the strap so you get a position where you can hold with control. Then as I come down, I'm gonna turn the rings out so I don't lose that false grip. Back to that start position. So repetitions there, you can obviously make it harder by making the uh, straps longer, easier by making the straps shorter, or you can just walk backwards to make it easier. Number one, focus, make sure you don't lose that false grip. I'm slipping a little bit, I need some chalk. Another one where flexibility matters. Now we're moving up to the trickier ones. We've got freestanding handstand, freestanding eccentric handstand push-up, freestanding eccentric press handstand, and a false grip chin-up. So freestanding handstand could obviously be done close to the wall, so you've got that as a spotter if you need it, but ideally you're gonna be in the middle of the floor, same style of kick up, hands on the floor, shoulders on top of the hands, pick that focal point, kick to a slight underbalance. I wouldn't kick to overbalance, overbalance means you're gonna be here and you're gonna be falling this direction. We wanna use that underbalance strength that we gain from those toe pull exercises, so shoulders slightly forwards, kick, hold in that position. Once you've got your balance, push up to a stronger handstand, without falling towards overbalance. Hang here for time. Then into the freestanding handstand push-up eccentric. So same setup, gonna have the hands a little bit wider than the freestanding handstand. So there, now I'm gonna take those shoulders forwards, keeping shoulders to feet a straight line. Elbows come in, create the triangle. Same as the pike push-ups, same as the chest to wall. Eccentric, hold, show control, come back out. Eccentric press handstand, exactly the same. Set up as the handstand push-up, slightly wider hands, externally rotated, pass through your straddle, roll down through the spine, low back, mid back, upper back, till you kiss the floor and hold. Then for the false grip chins, we're gonna go into the same setup as the rows, so we want that strong false grip position. Now you need to be careful at the bottom here. So when I straighten my arms, because my flexibility isn't that good in the false grip because of all the handstands, I often lose the false grip. So one little cheat you can do is not fully straighten the arms. Now it's not seen as perfect, but if you're doing a superset like this, it might be the difference between making the muscle up and not making the muscle up. So I'm gonna hold of a slight bent position there, but I get to the top, keeping the false grip, turn the rings out as much as I need to at the bottom. Try and get that contact, chest hitting the rings. Next we have the freestanding straddle handstand, the partial range handstand push up, the partial range press handstand, and an eccentric muscle up. So while most people are learning the one arm handstand, the straddle handstand is gonna be their friend. So it's easier to learn it this way. It's easier to lock the position. So we need to learn to lock the torso and the straddle legs. We don't wanna have legs that are all over the place like this and disconnected from the torso. To make the one arm handstand easier, we wanna be able to lock this position. So I'm piking the hips, I'm closing the hips to a point where they make connection with the torso and they become one piece. So when I move it around there, it's connected to the torso, it's not disconnected. 
very important for one hour handstands. Now for the partial range handstand push up, I'm gonna use a block like this. The block like this works really well because we've got three different heights that we can work to. You can do this chest to wall or back to wall as well, but I recommend if you have a freestanding handstand, definitely wanna start working it this way. So I'm gonna make that triangle. So the block is the triangle with the hands and then my head comes towards the block, my feet come backwards, I touch and come back up to that start position. If it's easy, I just decrease the height of the target so we start to work a bigger partial range of motion. So same technique, I'm just coming down deeper, touch, back up again. For the partial range press handstand, I'm using this height, but if you're newer to it, you'll have to use a higher height. We wanna go through that pathway. So depending on how high the boxes are, that's gonna de determine how wide they are apart to equal that same part of the pathway. So hands on the floor, hips here. If my hips are too far back this way, I'm not gonna be able to lift. I need to get my hip on top of the hands, and then I can press. So you'll have to play around with position, video from the side, change the heights, until you can start to float. Now a great assessment if you're close to the muscle up is the eccentric. So I'm gonna start in that top support position. I'm gonna come down to that bottom of the dip position. I'm gonna go through into my false grip as I transition round to the top of the chin up and then I'm gonna come down to the bottom. So you're looking for gaps there. If you fall for any of those positions, you need to practice that. A lot of people need to do lots of work on the transition because that's something that's a bit foreign. Okay, now it's getting interesting. We're gonna to go to straddle flag for the one arm handstand, crota handstand for the handstand push up, eccentric pike press for the press handstand, and a yo-yo for the ring muscle up. So we wanna be thinking about two things with this flag type movement. We wanna keep that tight straddle as we come down like this. And at the same time, we wanna keep the arms pushed in towards the midline. So I wanna think about the base staying in like this. So I'm pushing, see this is the mid or of my base of support, so straight down there. I need to be bringing my elbow and my shoulder into that middle as I flag down. What we don't wanna happen is this to start to happen because then your base is moving that way. If you flag that way, you're gonna fall that way. So as I go into my flag, so if I come straddle, flag down, notice my right elbow is pushing in towards the midline and now my left elbow is pushing in towards the midline. What we don't wanna do is that sideways movement. It wants to be coming down into itself so we can balance, not out, so we fall out. Crota handstand has a few options. The full movement would be nice and slow, head down to the floor, feet come up and push out. But if that's too hard, we can use momentum. So we can come down and push out. We can use the wall so I can have the wall behind me if I need that support when I go up, or I can go this way around and then walk up the wall. I can also do eccentrics both freestanding and against the wall. Then for the press handstand, we're gonna do that eccentric pike. Now it can be done against the wall like we've done the straddle eccentric, but I'm gonna go into the freestanding because we already have the freestanding and we're now getting to the more advanced options. So kicking up to that position, legs stay squeezed together, hip goes backwards, shoulders try and stay on top of the hands as best they can. And then as I come down, I'm gonna roll through the spine until tippy toes touch the floor. For the muscle up, we're gonna do exactly the same as the eccentric from before, but when I get to a certain distance down, I'm gonna to get to here and then push it back up again. So it's a yo-yo. We go down a little bit and then we go back up. Obviously, the deeper you go, the harder it is to get back out. And if you start going your elbow to go below the ring, it's probably actually harder than the muscle up. Now again, super close to the full movements now, we're gonna go fingertip one arm handstand, we're gonna go back to wall handstand push up, we're gonna to go to a full straddle press and then a full muscle up. Now we are skipping a few years of work here, but I'm gonna do this very quickly. So I'm gonna go into a straddle handstand. I'm gonna flag over. I'm gonna bring this shoulder and elbow in. I'm gonna go up onto fingertips by bending this elbow, not lifting this shoulder. And then I can just reduce the fingers in terms of how much assistance I need from a balance point of view. Hopefully when we start going up onto fingers, we actually don't have any weight in this hand. It's just helping us from a balance point of view, not because it's got weight in it. We ideally want to be shifted 100% into this hand and only literally just having a little bit of help from here. So I'll show you on my bad side first, flag over, elbow and shoulder in, come up onto fingertips, the elbow's bent, and then I can just reduce the fingers. So there's one finger, it's not amazing on that side. Let's see the good side, elbow and shoulder in, up onto fingertips, fingertips, Return to center, come back down. 
Now I'm starting to get tired now because I'm doing all of these movements, so you're not going to see the prettiest of demonstrations, but I'll do my best. So now I'm going to kick up back to wall. The idea of this one is that it's very, very close to a freestand handstand, but I've just got a little bit of wall support if I need it. Because when we do the freestand handstand, we want to use a lot of overbalance to help us. So as I come down, I'm going to see if I can touch the floor, come back up, I want to use overbalance. See there? That overbalance like we use for the current handstand, that shift up is going to get us out of the hole at the bottom. But having something to help us on the back to wall balance is really good. Then we don't keep falling over. So we don't want to use this too much, but just enough so we can get some repetitions. Press handstand is the full straddle press. I'm going to get as deep as I can here. Hands, tippy toes, legs go around the outside, pass through the straddle, shoulders come back on top. Find your straight handstand. Come back down through that same pathway, shoulders come forwards, to articulate through the back until your tippy toes touch the floor. Okay, muscle up's not going to be the cleanest because I don't have any chalk, so I might have to start with a little bit of bent arms. And also, super set it with all those handstands is not the best for a false grip. But let's see, so false grip hang, pull to there, transition, get through. Bottom of the dip, top of the dip. Do the eccentric and back down. Now interestingly, I've just checked my camera, so I've been doing one shot, so one video all the way through. I will edit it, so your version is gonna be shorter than this, but I've been going for 58 minutes to get to this point I am now. So if I was just gonna do all this as a workout, it's probably gonna take me about 45 minutes to get through the lot. But let's now see if we can get the main event. So one arm handstand, freestand handstand push up, pike press, and a muscle up forward roll. Now obviously I've skipped progressions and things. If you're actually learning these movements, you need to split them apart and learn all the progressions. But let's see if I can get them in one big superset. I'm not gonna cut the video in any way. This is me doing the superset. So I'm just see if I can get a few seconds on the left side, then the right side in the one arm handstand first. There. Okay, then we have the freestand handstand push up. So show control. There. Okay, then we go into pike press handstand, so legs together. There. And probably the one that's going to be the hardest because it's harder to train with the others, and I don't have any chalk, is the muscle up. And then into a forward roll. So I didn't really go through the progressions of this, but it's a shoulder stand out of the L sit and then roll through. So that's the superset. I'm tired now. Let me have any questions, requests, feedback down in the comments. Thumbs up and subscribe would be appreciated. If you're after coaching, check out my app or the link to my website, and I'll speak to the next one. Thanks, guys.